And welcome back to The Factor on Censored. The scammers are down bad and desperate as hell. Daniel Whitney with Driver Rentals says someone rented a car from him and tried to resell it as if nothing happened. Take a listen. When you, yes. you realize what had happened, what went through your mind? Um, so it, it, it's one of those things that it's so, uh, it's, it's so crazy that you almost don't believe it. Um, once, you know, we started to get the story about it, it's just like, you know, it, it, a lot of things didn't add up. And uh, it was just one of those things that just, it really, it threw a curveball at us. Um, and it made us really realize, we've been doing rentals for 10 years. It made us really realize um, how far to the lengths that these criminals will go um, to scam people. And, you know, it, unfortunately it happened to someone who was very unsuspecting, but uh, it also, you know, uh, shed a lot of light to us on what to look for now and uh, what's going on. Now, did the guy who initially rent the car from you or person or persons who rented the car from you, did they give you their true and real identifying information? So at the time, um, we do, we have uh, DMV checks and we have, uh, you know, a license uh, scanner and all that information. We do quite a few checks. Um, so what happened was we, we found out a little after uh, it's called synthetic ID fraud. It's basically when someone steals someone else's information and they have like a source at the DMV that will put their picture on someone's real information. Wow. So then when it's presented to us, it actually scans, it goes through, you know, they have valid credit card, valid insurance, but it's actually stolen information from someone else. So when they go and present it at a rental company, you know, like ours, it checks out as a real person. So you don't see any red flags. Now, he sold this to the unsuspecting victim for $26,000. Now, this Correct. car should have raised a, uh, raised a red flag that you can yes. buy this car for $26,000. Tell us a little bit about the car and how the guy fell, the victim fell for this scheme. So the car was a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, which many know is a very hot car. And not only the rental market, but just in cars in general, it's a very sought out car. Um, the victim fell, you know, um, well, he fell victim to this, this fraud because, um, the guy who rented it from us, he somehow got a hold of real title paper and real registration paper. Um, the red flags that were on these documents were the VIN was wrong. The number of doors the car had was wrong. Um, it didn't have the owner's name on it, which would have been us. And, uh, there were some misspellings. Those were the biggest red flags other than the price of $26,000 for a car. That's, you know, 70, $75,000. And I'm sure, you know, this unsuspecting victim here, he was just excited to get the car. He's not yes. get spellings and, and yeah. all this. Or I that think looks. the whole situation of getting the thought of getting a $70,000 Hellcat for $26,000 and the person appearing to have the title. The story he gave him is that he was going through a divorce and he really needed the money. So someone who's not really privy to cars or you know know a lot about these vehicles or how things are sold, they could easily fall victim to this. And I tell a lot of people who buy on Craigslist, offer up all these uh, websites, there's a lot of people on there doing this. There, you'll you'll see a car that's maybe worth fifty thousand, sixty thousand, or even you know a hundred thousand, and it's for ten to fifteen thousand dollars. So that has to raise a red flag in your mind as a deal that's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Now you were able through your tracker on the vehicle track it down to the unsuspecting victim, and, and what it appeared is as though you had some sympathy for him. You felt yes. like you were taken advantage of. Yes, I knew right away, and. Uh, once I, I got to the vehicle, um, I don't know if you were able to see, but he had completely changed, altered the appearance of it. So yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for our tracker, I almost didn't know it was our vehicle. Um, so when I got there and I saw who had it, in my mind, I'm like, well, this is not who rented the car. You know, it could have been, you know, maybe he rented it for someone and just didn't want to tell us. But once we start speaking with him, when we learned that he bought it off Craigslist, that's when we knew, you know, this was a bad situation. And how long had the car been out of your possession when the rental agreement was over? How many days was it out and about? Uh, once it was over? Yes, or the, the official rental agreement was over. How yes. long did the car go missing after that? Uh, it was about, I want to say it was like two days max, like maximum two so you, days. You guys jump on it quick. You don't just. Oh, yes. Right We've had a lot of situations happen where if something starts seeming weird and a car doesn't come back and we don't hear from the, the client, it's we're kind of on it right away. Just